who will be joining us. She is a Director General of Sharjah Ladies Club, and she will be talking about women to women. As I said earlier, all the bios are at the back of the brochure. I would like, sorry, I would like to, uh, I would like to uh, highlight uh, some of her recognitions. She has received several awards in her career. Executive Women as the Mind of a Winner in 2016. Exponent Media as the Emirati Women Achiever. And the Sheikh uh, Jawahar Medal for Contribution and Excellence in 2014, as well as a special recognition from Her Highness Sheikh Jawahar bint Mohammed al Qasimi's uh, award. This woman is extraordinary. I'm delighted to be able to introduce her to you. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Great speech, Christina. And wonderful action plans, Reem, mashallah. All the best. Um, I think I agree with Christina when she said it's very important for us to have plans and actions, not only talking and putting those. We need advocacy. We need uh, policies. And without that, we wouldn't have reached to where we are now today. <clears throat> it is with great pleasure to be part of the Arab Women in Leadership and Business Summit for the second time, and also to be surrounded by the majority of women here, the strong and powerful women here. But before I start with what I have prepared today, um, I just wanted to give you, um, um, on a nutshell, um, what shaped me and what was the vital um, the vital, um, uh, the, the vital role in my journey throughout the leadership and throughout working with a woman organization and working with women organizations that actually serve women and, and also we lead women as well in our journey. So let me give you like an intro about my journey, about the place that I work in and I'll just keep it very casual so um, you can um, ask me any questions by the end of the, uh, if we have any uh, a Q and A session here. So um, let me talk to you about Charter Ladies Club. This is the place that I've been working in since uh, 15 years ago. I graduated from the American University in 2002, and I've been working in Charter Ladies Club for 15 years. Uh, this is the place that actually I can proudly say that it's a gem in Sharjah, not only in Sharjah, but also in the United Arab Emirates. It was established by Her Highness Sheikha Jawahar bint Muhammad Al Qasimi, who's the wife of the ruler of uh, Sharjah. This is basically, it was established because it was her need back in 1982 for a place and a, and a, and a, and a let's say, an ecosystem for a woman or a mother to come by and just put her kids in a very safe place. And also she can nurture herself, she can um, be endorsed in different talents, she can look after herself and actually look good and stay fit as well. So she has established this gem in Sharjah and I'm very proud to start off my speech by talking about this um, initiative or this organization, let's say. So we, we can say that it's a one destination that actually has 15 uh, gateways. Um, I mean by that, that it's, um, it's a, it's, um, it has like 15 facilities that serve women and children. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, sorry, my iPad keeps on switching off, so I have to <laughs> keep on switching it on. Uh, so basically, uh, we have um, 15 gateways, 15 facilities that cater for women and cater for children. So I'll give you on a nutshell, um, what are the three different main categories that the club uh, is different of other clubs in the United Arab Emirates? And I believe it could be one of the few around the world as well. So I'm very proud to be managing this establishment. Uh, when we look at hospitality, we have cafes, we have restaurants, and we have a full-fledged team of FMB that looks after our catering. Um, that, I could say, they're not all women. They, we have a chef that is a man. We have few chefs that are men. And I don't have any problem in having men in, within our organization. Even the finance department, I have men as well. 
So um, looking at that, I can say that, uh, or what I've learned uh, throughout my journey is that there is, no, um, there is no stop to leadership and there is no a proper guide that tells you women should lead in this way and men should lead in that way. It's all about what is your goals, what are your action plans, and what is your strategy at the end of the day. The other uh, factor that I want to touch on, uh, touch base on is the health and beauty sector. Uh, we have a fitness center, we have uh, a spa that, that has a thalassotherapy pool, and this is the only uh, spa that has a thalassotherapy pool in the United Arab Emirates. It's very therapeutic, especially for women that, has, um, that have uh, um, problems in their knees and their bones, so it's, it's, it's a very therapeutic um, um, uh, facility or service that we have. We have our, uh, our uh, salon as well with uh, high brands that are well known like Miriam Covado, we have Natura BC. Those brands are international brands that are known in department stores, big department stores like Bloomingdale's, Harvey Nicks. But it's, I'm very proud to have them in the club. And this is, this is the reason why women are important to lead women organizations that serve women. Because you would know as a woman, as a mother, as a, as a, as a woman employee, what, what is best for your organization because the, the end result is our women. So what do you want? You want a summer camp for your kids in between the terms, you want winter camps, you want, uh, you want something that is natural in terms of products, you want, so here you go, this is a Sharjah Ladies Club. And of course, not, uh, not to forget our, our uh, core or our foundation, which is looking after children and looking after newborns. Uh, this is another reason that um, made me as personally to continue working in Sharjah Ladies Club. And I have four girls, by the way. My, my youngest is one year old. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, few days she's going to turn into, um, into one year. So basically this is the biggest aspect that Her Highness thankfully uh, has done at the beginning of establishing Sharjah Ladies Club and it was only for, for the staff that, are, that we're serving. Uh, she has opened a daycare and a preschool where our kids are rest, relaxed. There was, they're with us and commuting from place to place, from our house to the workplace, but uh, this is, this is a, uh, I can say it's a privilege for all moms working in Sharjah Ladies Club. Um, we even have the College Talent Center, which nurtures um, children into boosting their talents, into boosting their um, hobbies. We have a ballet center in the College Center. We have an uh, art, um, art um, um, a hub there in the, in the College. So basically, and even clay um, uh, activities as, as well and programs that could nurture children into focusing on what are their talents, what are their dreams, what are their uh, ambitions and actually help them grow further. So this is a place that is very close to my heart, as you can see. Um, if we look into, um, oh, okay, sorry. Yes, thank you. So I just wanted to give you on a nutshell what is Sharjah Ladies Club so you can actually visualize. And if you don't visualize, please come to Sharjah Ladies Club. I'm, I'm sending out an invitation here for all of you to visit. Please have a look.
This is Sharjah. This is not the Maldives. <laughs> Okay, so I said that Charger Ladies Club is um, initiated or, or founded in 1982, but I forgot to say one important thing. Those are not uh, franchises. Those are our homegrown businesses. We have established our salon by trial and error. We have established our businesses by trial and error. So I salute my team here for, for managing those different facilities, the 15 facilities that serve children and um, women. Uh, our main vision, of course, I wanted to share with you all is that to be one of the lead, UAE leading uh, clubs, ladies clubs, that to inspire the modern woman. Uh, our values fall into different categories like leadership. We believe in leadership. We do sustaining, sustainable training. We do succession training. We do management development program. There is always a time for juniors to lead. There is always a time for um, young support staff to be recognized. To be, to be, and this is this is all about leadership. Leadership is not you, you, you. You will always be there. But I mean, you have to give chances to. Your, the, to the rest of the team to also uh, manage the team as well. Creativity and innovation is one of our um, uh, most important uh, values because without it, we wouldn't have th thought about out-of-the-box ideas when it comes to an ecosystem that we have built about creativity, enhancing um, enhancing the the out of the box ideas come and write your idea we have come up with a with a, with a with a small committee that includes that uh, women could come and just or staff could come and just put any idea they could be from the housekeeping section they could be from um, any department doesn't have to be which level you are in but we give chances to all the staff levels to give their ideas this is this is empowerment this is you give chances for them to develop, you give chances, you believe in them. And this is even another thing that is very important. Uh, privacy and safety, th this is one of our core values because um, this is what distinguished our club from the rest of, uh, of any, um, let's say, hotels or clubs, that we have a private and exclusive um, organization that no men are allowed, but hey, I have my meetings with men, so it's fine. We have an outdoor meeting room, so so don't worry about that. Um, but it's only for women, serving women, and you feel so comfortable um, um, swimming on the beach with your kids. You don't feel like someone is taking pictures of you. We have security all all around, so um, it's 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 and and this is one of our very um, a core a value that um, that keeps us very different. And this is what Her Highness always uh, thrives for and says privacy is the most important thing in the club. And this makes us different. Even, like, I, I don't mean only for UAE women. It's open for all nationalities. And even some nationalities, they don't feel comfortable, you know, going to the beach and wearing, let's say, a bikini or something. They want to have an, a place that they feel comfortable in. So the club is the place. Uh, quality and excellence, we invest a lot in training our staff. Uh, we have specialized training. We have training that are, um, uh, that are about uh, hair, L'Oreal. We have brands that, could, that, can, uh, that, do, that do continuous training like Miriam Covedo. We do hair analysis. This service wouldn't have been uh, given without the training behind for the staff that we have. Um, of course, customer satisfaction is very important to us because we're not only a service oriented, but we are a product oriented. So for me to test whether the, um, uh, the, the service has been exceeding the customer satisfaction is where customer satisfaction is very important. We do training for the, for the front office. We do training uh, for all kind of... Um, staff that actually interact with, uh, with our customers. And my key is, I always tell them, is that the club is a journey. It's not a place that they will go to the salon and leave. I want them to feel as they go in, people are smiling at their faces. They go, they try out the service. I want them to be exceeding their expectation when it comes to only a service. I want them to feel that they are a pampered woman coming out of the club. And this is what I always say, and I always let my, my team know. Uh, the last thing is about teamwork, and I believe that without teamwork, we wouldn't have uh, reached anywhere. 
Uh, we recently, two years ago, we started this initiative internally in an organization where I would love to share it with you, is that for any event that we do, we actually have, um, it's usually the events, the events team that actually organizes it. But we recently involved the entire team. Whoever want to volunteer, there's someone in finance that would like to be part of an event who doesn't know how to also organize an event. But we let them be part of the event because we have those small committees that actually nurture them. Maybe this is their passion. Maybe they will flourish in a certain thing that we don't know. Maybe they, we, we have forgotten about them. So this is also another thing that we have looked into. Uh, the, um, yeah. So let me share with you what makes a great leader. Those are my beliefs. So um, I can't really talk on your behalf. Maybe your beliefs are different, but those are my beliefs throughout the 15 years of experience in Sharjah Ladies Club. I feel exchanging knowledge and engaging it is very important. I sit with my staff sometimes and I just talk about a brand that I've just recently used. I like to share what, what and after trial of course, I like to share the knowledge that I have whenever I hear like information that is new to me and it's very interesting. I like to sit with the team and just exchange their ideas and hear it. And, and not only hearing your staff is important, it's also engaging. Let them be part of the organization goals. Let them, be, let them know what is your goals. What, where do you want to reach in the organization? The other thing is a motivator and inspiring is something that is, <clears throat> I think, core. You, you, you have to have the charisma to be inspiring. I don't, I don't see all leaders as inspiring, but I see all charismatic leaders are inspiring. So I think if you inspire others, if you lead by example, you're gonna motivate others. And the key here is to be very close to your team. Never had the, ba the boundaries that the door, the, not only the open door policy, but like, I mean, if they have anything, even something personal, they should open the door and come and talk to you. And that you should lead them not only in management, not only in leadership, but lead them in their life. You never know, maybe something very small that you can tell them, they're gonna smile and remember you for the rest of, the, of, the, of their life, you know? And it happened to me several times. So um, I, I think inspiring is very important. And the other thing is that uh, we have to be considerate. We have to praise looking good. We have to praise each other if we see something that is nice. I think this is, this is something that um, women can do uh, very comfortably and it's, it's very nice actually, it's very humble to be considerate because if you are considerate you will be able to, um, to, um, to, to, uh, to look after that person, to, to, feel, to let them feel that they are important. Uh, the other thing that, I was, uh, that is very close to me is the emotional intelligence because I think with an organization that has multi-nationalities uh, in, 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 in the club, like we have Filipinos, we have Indians, we have Arab from uh, different Arab expats, it's very important to be emotionally intelligent because without it, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't be able to communicate cleverly and smartly with them. Uh, how are we with time? Mm -hmm. Are we good in time? Okay, I won't take long. I just have two slides more. Okay, in my point of view, again, woman leadership, uh, I don't want to differentiate and make a battle here, men, women, and everything. As I said, um, I, feel, I feel leadership is leadership whether it's women, whether it's men, it's the way how you, you, you um, uh, communicate leadership. And in my point of view, women are more, um, they have the side of empathy more than men, where we, we and it's, it's never a negative thing, this makes us closer to our team, it makes us feel our team um, and, and see how can we develop them, how can we nurture them. The other thing that is, we are very cooperative, I believe, I'm very cooperative. I believe in, in committees. I believe that I don't want one person's point of view. I want a collaborative point of view. I want to see, especially that I'm not, I'm not catering for a niche market here. I'm catering for a, for a whole society. So I would love to hear what, what does our support staff say about this new facility? What does our higher management say about this? So it's very important to be cooperative. Um, I believe that we are very visionary. We have, we think, 20 years down the road. And I always say that as a leader, 
you have to think 20 years down the road or 30 years down the road. You have to put the plan. You have to put the path for your staff. They will never come and think about that. They will never. You have to always look in a, in a, in a, in a helicopter point of view. The other thing is wearing many hats. I think you all agree in that. I think um, uh, we, can, we can actually lead in different, um, different aspects and different fields. I was in, in, uh, as a member of committee of chess. I didn't know anything about chess, but I remember my father used to push me when, I was, when, when they asked me whether you want to be a member in the, in the board. So I told my father, he's like, go for it. It's the, it's the sports of the... Um, of the kings, so go for it. So I'm like, oh yes, I will. So I did, and it's it's all about. I think I think our brain is a cushion when it comes to women and uh, and and leaders because we can prove to others that we can hold other fields and we can um, uh, uh, focus on different aspects as well. Uh, of course, we're good listeners. If you agree with me, sometimes we interrupt each other, but we are very good listeners. <laughs> Um, the last slide is my inspiration. Of course, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very honored to, to have parents like my parents. My mother, my father has served the country. My father, 35 years in the foreign affairs. My mom served 25 years in the Ministry of Education. And, uh, and she was one of the few that studied abroad to continue her education in Iraq. I'm talking in 1970s or, ni yeah, 1971. And this is, this, is, this is who I am. And without them, I think I, I wouldn't have flourished. I wouldn't have been standing here and being confident. I think what the, the most important thing that they have um, uh, touched on us is the fulfillment internally. And I think this is, if you are fulfilled internally, you wouldn't care about a designation. You wouldn't care about people calling you your excellency or whatever. You wouldn't care about what car you're riding. You will be fulfilled. And this is the most important. If you are fulfilled internally, you would be able to reach the stars. Take it from me. I, I am, I'm, I'm so glad that I have parents like my mom and my father. The other thing is, of course, the other biggest aspiration for me to continue working those 15 years is Her Highness Sheikha Jawahar Rabbant Muhammad Al Qasmi, the wife of the ruler of Sharjah, basically, and her daughter as well, Sheikha Badur Al Qasmi. They are wise women. They are women that believe in the power of women. They give you all. The, 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 the services, they give you all the facilities and they tell you, go and walk the talk. Do it, and it's okay if you, if you once in a while you do any mistakes, it's fine. Get up and, and move on. So they are, they are also the people that, that I can uh, say that without them, I wouldn't be standing here, honestly. Uh, of course, at the end is my family. My, my daughters and my husband, because I go back home and they give me the, the, the they refill my energy, whether what happened in the, at work, they just refill it. And uh, at the end of the day, I hope I have given you a nutshell of who I am as Khawla and the organization that I work on. You guys should come to Sharjah Ladies Club. And I just want to leave you here with a quote that I totally believe on. I don't know whether it will inspire you, but hey, let's see. The only way to get, the, the, the only way to great work is to love, to love what you do by Steve Jobs. And I think loving what you do, letting you reach the stars here. So all the best, ladies. I hope it was a, a pleasant presentation. Thank you.